do recognise that it's um, very important that people inside the Labour Party have pressured their councillors to vote no to the HDV yeah, yeah. tomorrow night. Okay? Yeah. And if that didn't happen then, there would be an HDV by the end of the day tomorrow. And hopefully there won't be. Yeah. Hopefully there won't be. Um, okay, Sean, you're next. Um, my name's Sean, I'm from uh, Southern Defend Council Housing. Um, council tenant uh, for most of my life in Southern. And uh, I think there's a couple of myths among many that working class people are, are, are often fed, are they not? The first one is, and it's spoken about it's all right. Everyone can hear me, yeah? yeah. Um, first one is that uh, developers are, we can't do that, developers, that somehow we have to have these developers, and uh, that they are the answer to everything. And I think, you know, we no longer believe that. You know, we've seen, as Sean spoke about, sort of some of the victories and uh, uh, how they've come about. You know, I live between the Haygate and the Aylesbury, and I get, I got an email today talking about the Elephant Park is doing their next bit. Why don't you come and see how fantastic it's going to be? that the Aylesbury's going to do this, we're going to supply this in many social homes, you know, and we've got the Elephant and Castle Redevelopment, and we don't believe any of it. No, this is, this is a difference. This is where we are. And that's come from how we've organised them uh, uh, and together. The other myth, one of the other myths, is about migrants that we get, that somehow they're to blame for the housing crisis. There was a letter in Southern News a few weeks ago saying, well, actually, people are coming to take homes. Absolute bullshit, as we all know. Yeah, two and a half million council homes have been sold off under right to buy on top of all those that have been demolished. If that hadn't been the case, there's enough to house everyone. That's the reality. Don't listen to their, their absolute bullshit. Um, uh, a couple of other things. I've been down to the CPO in inquiry and it's quite vicious. You know, I was, I, I don't know, I'm not naive, but I was quite shocked at the viciousness of the, their intimidation, their attacks on people, you know, trying to say that there's no alternative again to demolish it and, you know, that's the only way that, that, that we can do things. Even though what came out of that inquiry, Beverly, if I'm not wrong, they've admitted that it's cheaper to refurbish the Aylesbury than it is to demolish it. This is the sort of lunacy that, that, we're, that we're believing that's coming through developers. With the zombie Blairite uh, Labour councils that, that are supporting them uh, uh, across uh, 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 London. Um, housing associations, just quickly, a couple of points to finish. They, are, they seem to me, are becoming legitimised or trying to legitimise what they do. Because housing associations sound like you know, social housing, but most housing associations next year or a couple of years will build no social housing. There will be none. It will be built and buy to sell. I'm, I'm getting as bad as Peter's telling you me to, to sum up. Uh, um, so, you know, it's important that housing associations, we join together and everyone joins together. But So to finish, really, I think what the Elephant Campaign, Elephant Castle Campaign showed us is that where we organise, where we get together, across the range, we can actually yeah. do something, and achieve something. They've come back with a different offer. It's not the end. The Aylesbury's not lost either. We have to organise and fight it and carry on doing what we're doing. Thank you, Tanya. Is there a microphone? There's one here, Thank you. I stopped the clock. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Tanya. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm Graham Lear. I live on the Draper Estate. I used to be chair of the Tenants Association many years ago. And uh, it's a great privilege to have you here. And welcome to Draper Estate, and please treat it as your hall, this is your home, it's, 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 uh, it, and it's here for organisations and, and for events like this. I want to pay tribute to Tanya and her friends that uh, the work that they've done supporting local residents at the Elephant and Castle. Many years ago, in 1984, I moved into a council home in a Labour-controlled council, and I was really pleased because I thought, quite naively, that they would be putting the council tenants at, at the heart. Of, of, of the housing operation. Of course, uh, my life has taken uh, a, a few turns. As you may know, I've been a Liberal Democrat councillor for more than once I've come now. Uh, they've awarded me all the status for the work I've done for local people. But um, I remember I was a local councillor down on St James's estate, and it was me that got St James's round the table with the, with the BNP and the local, uh, yes, and you remember uh, Millwall Mick, 
and we, we, we sort of comes to James's, I think it was uh, St. James's bracket, uh, uh, the Housing Association bracket commercial closed, closed brackets because it was a, a non-social club. We were quite shocked. I started getting emails saying my rent's going up 40%. And I thought, it's got to be a typo, there's got to be a problem here, this isn't right. But it was right. But we made the decision that, that it wasn't going to be, and we managed to, to, to fight that. So they're, they're uh, well done to the people of St. James's for getting organised and stuff. The point that I was going to come to, it's, uh, obviously it's important to support social housing. Uh, like I said, I've been a council tenant now for more than 30 years, good times and bad, and, and it's, it's been lovely to, 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 to be able to, 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 to call myself a local council tenant. This hall, uh, I used to say I used to be a local councillor. Uh, I was a, the, 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 the vice chair of the housing scrutiny committee, and we got a report coming in about tenant halls. And there were a green light, which, is, which meant that the council were prepared to dispose of them, that there wouldn't be any uh, political kickback. There was an amber light saying, we may be able to dispose of it, we're not so sure, there could be problems. And there was red light, which is, under no circumstances, <laughs> are we going to dispose of this hall? This hall was on the amber list. I went home, I was most upset. I went home, we spoke to my, I spoke to my wife because I hadn't been involved in the Tenants Association because I was a local councillor. It was, I felt it was inappropriate to, to, to be wearing both hands. Anyway, my wife uh, picked up the, uh, she picked up the fight and got involved and now we've got a, a charity here, uh, Draper Together, which isn't just representing uh, residents of the Draper Estate, but is representing on a wider uh, basis everybody here at the Everton Castle because Actually, when you get up close, you realise that the Elephant Castle doesn't have a community organisation which represents all of us. And especially with people that are coming into the Elephant Castle, we begin to realise that they don't, they, they're not aware of the social cohesion and they're not aware of the history and the strength of this, of this place and the people that make this place. So we, we're very proud of that. Tanya, sum up, please. I, you have to rip the microphone out of me. I want to talk about the abilities that, the, uh, that, 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 that we enjoy as social tenants. A few years ago, we lost our garages. We've had a conversation about the, the, the car culture another time. But we lost one of our great amenities, which was our garages, because the local authority knocked them down because they wanted to move a church, a crossway church, from the Newcape Road on, on the site of where the Haygate used to be, so that they could clear that site, so that they could give it to land, uh, land lease. Uh, so now we must afford the housing because after all, this is a housing, this is a housing estate. But they put a church, they imposed a church upon us because we weren't able to say no. There, there are garages with their part of our immunity. So we, we lost. And, and the council now are going to do the same on Perriman House at the other side of the earth from the castle, where they're going to take away the garages and, and the amenities of the council tenants simply to facilitate uh, the Lance's problems. The problems that the Lances are having with, with relocating the traders there. So yes, we've got to support council housing, and I think the tide is turning. But also, thank you, Tanya, and I am summing up now. You've got to support the amenities which weren't given to us that we fought for, the previous generations fought for, and, and, and won um, through, through various means. And we've got to protect those amenities. That, that, and if we don't protect them, they won't be here for future generations. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry, around. That's all right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Terry McGrenra. I'm a council tenant and have been for 30 years, and I live in Tar Hamlets. I come here tonight not to talk about the Aylesbury, but to talk about the Harrington. Uh, Harrington. They say things go in threes, and this is proved to be right, because in Tar Hamlets, Popular Harker, which is, began yeah. 20 years ago, a housing association which was going to be the new type of uh, uh, housing provider, whereby her people, tenants, were, be, were going to be participants and involved in decisions. But all I want to tell you about Popular Harker is that now, 20 years later, it wants to be de- classified as a housing association so that it won't provide social housing. Tomorrow morning, as a result, there is going to be a demonstration outside Poplar Harker's offices in East India Dock Road, which is across the road from All Saints DLR station. 
And what's the reason why the demonstration is taking place is because Pablo Harker with Telford Holmes wants to demolish the street market and the Lansbury estate. The Lansbury estate named after George Lansbury, mm -hmm. a labor leader in the city. And what they're going to do is basically extend Canary Wharf across the road, across the East India Dock Road, into the heartland of what is social housing. What they want to do is get rid of the market whereby people buy their fruit and veg, mostly Bangladeshis. And they want to move them elsewhere, where it hasn't been decided as yet. They want to knock, they want to change the tendencies of the uh, businesses. And so that they won't charge them more rent. They also want to take away their car park space. The car, okay, the car park space. And basically give them somewhere else to park. So there's going to be, as I say, and I have spent the last uh, week or so preparing a uh, statement which will go before the Strategic Development Committee meeting <coughs> next week to find these. And to sum up, what we want to do is basically retain the community as it is. Protect the housing, protect the shops that, per, that, that they, uh, they people uh, use, and we want to protect the market. And if we don't get that, basically, then we are another nail in the coffin of the way we live and work. Exciting to hear from so many different struggles, so many people um, involved in campaigning and organising, and some of the victories or near victories that are coming about. And I think it's a real tribute to defend council housing, you know, to bring all the different people who are fighting together. Because the truth is, I think when, uh, when you said when you get people together in a room and when you start organising, they're not just placeholders who know nothing in these councils; they're terrified. They're actually afraid of the people they're meant to serve. Yeah, yeah. You see that when you know you're at, we're all in the foyer at Southwark Town Hall or something. There, you see that in Kensington and Chelsea when people are trying to come in and the councillors go, oh, no, 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 keep them out. They're afraid of the people. And they're afraid of the organised people saying, no, we don't want this, etc. So I think that is really exciting. And I think you're right, you know, yes, the councillors are moving, but they're only moving because there's pressure on them. Do you know what I mean? It's because we organise in Southwark or because other people organise in other places, brought different people together, brought different interests together, that they are moving. And without our struggle, they will carry on doing what they're doing. Very briefly on um, Notting, Hill, Notting Hill Housing. Um, Kate Davis, CEO of Notting Hill Housing, has total contempt that she has expressed over and over for the tenants of social housing. She doesn't believe in social housing, and she believes that the people who live in it are at a dead end. And that's the CEO of Notting Hill Housing, right? So, we, you know, not just Genesis. Is, what did you say? Yeah. The four letter word beginning with S and only with C. We need to know what they are already and, and why we need to fight these people. I think part of the question we're going to need to come back to, you said, you know, we can make this happen. We're all fighting for decent, affordable, secure, safe housing. The problem is the question of the land. It is land prices rising because they've got, no, you know, all these investors, the City of London, these bankers, all these people, they've got nowhere else to put the dirty money they get from the rest of the world. They can't invest it, you know, the interest rates are nowhere and they're investing in land. And you can, you can mirror, you know, with the crisis, the rise in land prices. So if we want to fight for housing, actually we have to also know we're not just taking on the developers, we're not just taking on the councillors, we are actually taking on the system we're living in that is messing everything up, that is in crisis. I mean, you see it with Carillion. They are in a mess, they are in crisis. And we need to be prepared to fight on every level for everything we need. And finally, I've got a question that's probably to Jerry, because he'll know, I think he just might know more about it. Um, at the council community meeting that Peter John, you know, pontificated at about the elephant, he said the, private, uh, the public sector, council sector, can no longer deliver social housing. We depend on the private sector to do it. Delancey talked about, when they talked about their pathetic offer on Elephant, 
uh, you know, whatever. I forget what exactly said, 23 homes, I think. They talked about social rent equivalent. These are not council homes. These are not going to be run by the council. And I believe, and I think I might have read on your website, the, ca they, the council doesn't even control who gets them. And there might be an income level or an economically active question that, I'm, I'm finishing, that um, rules out pensioners, does they, you know, and that they are not secure and that the rents start at social rent equivalent and can rise. And I think, because I, I think the mayor is putting that into some of his draft proposals, I think Southwark Council are putting it into their draft, their new draft housing proposals. And I think they want that to be the future of social housing, that there will be no more, as far as they're concerned, council-owned, publicly-owned homes. There will be social rent equivalent delivered by private developers with no security whatsoever. And if anyone knows more about that, I'd be interested. Hi, um, I'm with the uh, World Green Party. Uh, my name is Ignas. I have a couple of uh, issues to discuss with you. I'm a resident of the Ellisbury Estate. Uh, I'm a new resident there, so uh, I'm not familiar with all the issues. I'm trying to learn as I go. Um, one thing uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, ask you is uh, there is a survey uh, that was distributed to the North Church um, North Church Wing, and it says that um, uh, in the survey it uh, it asked that the um, they asked the resident if they wanted to be relocated faster, and 80, uh, 64 percent responded, and out of those 84 percent preferred yearly rehousing. So I'm you know quite surprised by these numbers, and I believe those to be untrue. Yeah. Um, yeah. As such, um, I have uh, designed a survey um, because I don't have a lot of money and the uh, mm -hmm. Green doesn't have a lot of money, it would be an internet survey. Uh, so I'll, I'll provide an address if anybody wants to fill out the survey, they live in the Ellensburg estate. We'll have uh, some alternative data to show and uh, I hope that the CPO will be able to accept that and will be able to evaluate uh, that data as well. And um, the second uh, issue I wanted to uh, discuss with you is that we do need a, a final solution to this problem of having to defend again and again of the, uh, against the council coming after our uh, businesses, coming after our, um, our living places, coming after our homes and our property. Um, this is not supposed to happen. They are supposed to represent the people I do not think they, they do, even with 76% labor councillors, um, they are not able to do it. And as such, um, as such, uh, we, um, in uh, World Green Party, we are running in Faraday Ward, and is running in other wards. We have two candidates. Uh, uh, one of them is Liba Hoskin, which I think a lot of people know. I am another candidate out of necessity, not because I... Uh, really want to, but I feel like we need to fight for the people. And uh, you're welcome to join if you live in Faraday Ward. Uh, we, we're looking for a third candidate. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Julie Fitz, Chair Southwark Defence. You talked about ballots earlier and the wording. We need to be really clear on the wording. And that's why I'm actually the old Pet Road big development was heading our way. Um, this was come through the mail yesterday, and the drop in session is for today and yeah, the 7th of March as well. So, do they really want to engage with you? No. Um, and the, the questions, you know, the way that they word the questions, I mean, who on earth is going to answer no to this? So, do you support the proposal set out in the revised plan to give us 7,000 new affordable homes? including social housing in the area and a further 13,000 private homes which will help to pay for the affordable homes. Who is not going to answer yes to that question? Of course they are, until people realise that affordable is not affordable to the people that live there. You know, affordable is not affordable for the majority of people living in Cancelwise. And I loathe the term social housing. We need to start getting back to talking about council housing. Yes, no, no. <laughs> Uh, okay, that, that, that's, sorry, that, that was our last um, speaker. I just 
want to say um, a couple of things that are open back. Um, Beverly. Sorry? Beverly. Oh, Beverly. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You don't, uh, how about you? Is your no, voice on the screen? Voice okay or no voice? No, 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 no. Okay, sure. Uh, no, okay. There is, there is a, 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 a